I want to thank, uh, in particular, I want to thank my family. My wife Eve is here tonight. Um, this is my wife Eve. I want to thank. I. I want to thank you all. Mm. Last night, Representative Adam Schiff finished first in the primary election for uh, Dianne Feinstein's vacant, well, it's not vacant at the moment, but uh, Dianne Feinstein's Senate seat. Uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom has appointed someone to fill the seat in the meantime. But nonetheless, Schiff's moment of triumph, as you could see from that video, was short lived because uh, pro Palestinian protesters interrupted by demanding a ceasefire and chanting about how they want to cease fire now. Now, uh, it's also worth noting that Adam Schiff engaged in some political maneuvering to essentially prop up the one Republican candidate uh, in order to, well, essentially make in his mind the general election, the, which will happen in November, a lot easier. Now, others who are running against him included Democrat Katie Porter and Democrat Barbara Lee. And uh, those are two individuals who might be a little more competitive for Adam Schiff, which is why he uh, focused on uplifting a Republican. Now, um, that's actually not what this segment is about. It's about how the uh, crypto community got involved and also worked real hard to crush Katie Porter, but not Adam Schiff. And we'll get to why in just a moment. But John, do you want to jump in? Oh, I just hate, I hate so much That's of it. That's the perfect commentary. That's exactly uh, right. I hate so much of it. I love, I love, you know, he, he's hearing the chanting and stuff. Mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. trying to do his victory speech, he's hearing the chanting. Obviously, look, that's inconvenient if you're trying to do a speech. And so he does the thing that you do where you just buy time by saying the same thing over and over and over and again. But what he's saying is, I want to thank you all. But, but what he means is, I'd really like to talk to a subset of you and I really want the rest of you to shut up, which is a weird way to communicate, <laughs> I, I want to thank you all. Um, and I was looking at him there and obviously he feels like, hey, I did it, the strategy worked, the cynical, dirty strategy worked where I screwed over other Democrats, good Democrats that are very popular and that's why I screwed them over because they're popular. And I know that his fans won't care, but like, I just always imagine if you could take an individual and sit them down and have an actual conversation with them, I would want to take some of the people who are standing behind Adam Schiff. Mm -hmm. Just be like, you know that this is the strategy that he pursued. You know who he's screwing over and who he's elevating, who he's risking potentially taking the seat. Is this the sort of person that you think should, that best represents California? One of the most lib states of the nation should have this guy. You know, even crypto stuff aside, that sounds like it's going to make it worse. And at what cost now? Like, you know, it sucks for Barbara Lee, but also Katie Porter. Now we're just not gonna have Katie Porter for a couple of years. So it's just the whole thing is so dirty. It should be beneath the, the Democrats, especially a Democrat that would be chosen by California. And I just hate it. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Well, since uh, there were pro-Palestinian protesters there chanting for a ceasefire, I think it's appropriate to draw some parallels, okay? Because remember, Adam Schiff propped up Steve Garvey, the Republican in this race, so he can run against Garvey in the general and point to him and say, "Oh, he voted for Trump, dangerous guy, fascist, fascist." And it kind of reminds me of Netanyahu propping up Hamas, funding Hamas. Why did he do that? He did that so he could then point to them as a terrorist organization and justify the slaughter of Palestinians that's currently being carried out now. I know it's a little bit of a tangent, but I do see some yeah. parallels. Well, and in by that, the way, in most that case, people, nothing bad happens. So no, totally, fine. yeah, nothing bad happens. I love how all of the propagandists on behalf of Israel do all these press interviews and talk about the threat of Hamas without mentioning that their prime minister funded and propped up Hamas. But let's move on to I the think there's topic a lot of Israelis that are really angry about that. I do think that that is the case. Not angry enough apparently, but let's move on. So let's get back to Schiff and how much money he spent on propping up the Republican Steve Garvey in this race. Schiff's campaign spent more than $12 million on ads contrasting him with Garvey, meaning 
you know, how he's different from Garvey, which increased awareness of the Republican and boosted his standing in polls. Congratulations, Schiff. $12 million. He spent $12 million in donor money. I don't know if the donors to Schiff were aware of how he was gonna utilize this money as part of his strategy to prop up the Republican candidate, but that's what he did. And the plan worked. Admittedly, it's, I guess, a clever strategy in a deeply blue state like California, where I wish voters were just a little more in engaged and didn't just vote based on um, you know, the party that the candidates are associated with. I think that would actually lead Democrats in being more competitive and maybe they would listen more to their constituents instead of just riding the wave of Democratic voters who just vote along with their tribe. But anyway, uh, let's move on to what this means for the crypto community because they got involved as well. I should note that Democrats have a two to one voter registration advantage in California. Speaking to the point that I made earlier of how deeply blue this state is. And the state has not elected a Republican to statewide office since Arnold Schwarzenegger was reelected as governor back in 2006. Schiff also has the support of 80% of California's Democratic congressional delegation. Um, and that includes Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell. He's deeply, you know, part of the Democratic machine and the Democratic establishment. So none of that should be surprising. And a political piece published last weekend argued that Schiff's secret weapon was none other than former President Donald Trump. And he knows that because he gets to fearmonger about Trump and garner support by doing so. With his dossier of Trump bestowed insults like shifty watermelon head, which I hadn't heard before, but that's hilarious, either. and little pencil neck. Schiff raised nearly $32 million for the Senate run, a staggering sum that's nearly two times the number of any other Senate candidate in the, in the country this cycle. Uh, while he incorporated messages about delivering for California, Schiff never strayed too far from the Trump bashing. Trump was central to his launch and first policy rollout. And the former president's name was among the top three most mentioned categories in Schiff TV ads. At the same time, uh, Porter faced attacks from Silicon Valley. Uh, billionaires, the tech industry, and cryptocurrency investors. And this is what I want to focus on, okay? Because it wasn't just Schiff propping up the Republican so he could run against him in the general. It was also about cryptocurrency um, interests playing a role in crushing the one candidate who's actually the most outspoken in regulating crypto, and that's Katie Porter. So the crypto industry super PAC, Fair Shake, spent more than $10 million opposing Porter's campaign. Fair Shake's top donors include the crypto exchange Coinbase, crypto firm Ripple Labs, venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz and its founders, and the Winklevoss twins. Just a who's who of crypto, I guess. Now, Fairshake has over $73 million on hand. And the advertisements that began airing on social media platforms and on television in February make no mention of crypto. Instead, they paint Porter as a fake and an accomplished actor. Right, okay. I don't know, I mean, Schiff was acting as if his main opposition was Steve Garvey before he made that the case. They're all actors, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like the the notion that Adam Schiff is like this genuine, sincere politician. You know, why Katie Porter in particular? Because I'm not saying everything Katie that she's Porter ever said is. She was the biggest threat to Adam Schiff. Yeah, exactly. He knew it. He knew it. Yeah. Which is again the reason why. And by the way, Katie Porter was the biggest threat to crypto, which uh -huh. is why crypto spent all this money to defeat her. And then you have Adam Schiff. You know, propping up the Republican so he doesn't have to run against Katie Porter in the general. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty. Now, uh, Fair Shake uh, attacks Porter. Uh, California is on the forefront of new developments in technology, says Adam Schiff. Gee, I wonder why they wouldn't attack Adam Schiff. From Web3 and quantum computing to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, he says. We need to develop comprehensive regulatory frameworks to ensure that these companies and jobs stay here and grow here. I'm hearing tax cuts. And that the United States remains the global leader in these important new technologies. Important. That is from Adam Schiff's website. They're important technologies and he just, he wants regulatory frameworks. He's all about regulating them. That's right. what he's going to do when mm -hmm. he immediately transitions to saying, we just want them to grow, you know? 
you know, maybe some more pump and dumps. Maybe some of the people who contributed to my campaign will lose everything. Um, oh, I just can. And look, you've covered the the influence that uh, crypto like like super PACs have had in a number of other races, and they're they're really starting to throw their weight around. They're flush with cash that they've stolen from a lot of people, and they want to protect themselves from the regulations that people like Schiff should be considering, but almost certainly won't after this. No, he's thinking about tax cuts. He wants their support. And you know, to your point, crypto got involved in other races this cycle as well, including spending more than 1.7 million dollars backing Shomari. Figueres, a House candidate in Alabama who finished on top. In Texas, State Representative Julie Johnson, who benefited from just shy of $1 million in spending from the crypto PAC and is leading the Democratic primary to replace Representative Colin Alred, though the race hasn't yet been called with 44% of votes in. And by the, no, the race has been called, Johnson won. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Yay, money They're in good politics. investors. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they do get a nice return on that investment. I'm sure uh -huh. they're looking forward to the lack of regulations and those massive tax cuts or tax incentives uh -huh. to stay in California. Real important for crypto to remain in California.